Hey guys, I have what I think is one of the best forgotten classic vehicles. This is the 1978 Volvo 242 GT. Let's get into it. So hiding under the hood of this Volvo is their legendary Red Block B21 inline four cylinder. Now this one has the fuel injection and that is part of the GT package, which bumped power up to 138 horsepower. I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but keep in mind, this is the late seventies where Mustangs and Corvettes were doing less than 200 horsepower. All right, so hopping in the Volvo and boy, is it, it's kind of weird to find this <laughs> where that that latch is. I know it doesn't move around, but I'm just so used to having a belt buckle that actually like moves around. So it's kind of weird to click it into a spot that's that's fixed, but oh man, I have always wanted to drive one of these 70s Volvo 200 series cars. They are just super cool. I love these corduroy seats. I can't get over that. Like, what? Corduroy seats? Why don't they do that anymore? Because these things have held up pretty well, actually. I mean, from 1978 all the way to now, it's, they're still intact. They haven't ripped. You know, like a lot of modern leathers, they'll like start drying and cracking and ripping, but not these. And come on, why can't we do more headliners like these, like this? Volvo had such a good idea by doing like this hard plastic headliner and sure it's not as luxurious but over time it looks just like it rolled off the showroom floor um yeah I just I love the interior of this thing honestly it's it's just super rad and it's great every bit of it all right now as far as performance goes I am up here at elevation and this is a naturally aspirated engine so it's would not say fast by any means come on you can do it there's 40 miles an hour and there's 50 yeah um so it's it's not quick you know if if you're at sea level and you got one of these it, it'd probably feel a lot better quite honestly um but up here at elevation naturally aspirated engines really do suffer quite a lot of power loss Now, the GT got this special grill where the fog lights were actually integrated right into the grill rather than having it on the lower fascia like some of the other Volvos. And every single GT came with this specific silver, at least all the ones sold here in the US. There were some that were brought to Canada. Those were all black and there were only about 200 of those. As far as in the US goes, we got maybe a thousand. There's really not many of them. But what I also really like is this pinstripe going down the side. Now, 3M actually approached Volvo on this pinstripe because they wanted to show that they could make a pinstripe that was weatherproof and held up over time and I would say it did so it did pretty well it's held up fairly well over time and then talking about the uh, nomenclature here with these late 70s and early 80s Volvo 200 series the last number is what tells you how many doors it has so 242 this is a two-door if you had a 244 that'd be a four-door if you had a 245 that would be your wagon and then this is the gt model so their sporty model which came with bigger wheels and some suspension upgrades and like i said that fuel injection and a lot of other interesting bits on the inside and the back as well now starting on the back these pinstripes are continued and boy do they look super 70s and really cool also this one has these back louvers which weren't a factory option but a lot of people that got these got them and these were actually like period correct you would see this a lot and i think it looks awesome the way it is on there and 78 interesting enough was the last year of this kind of rear end where it's more flat and squared off in 79 they went to a more rounded design where these taillights kind of wrapped around here and opening up the trunk on this thing 
you would be surprised at how much space you have in this thing. Now, I just picked up a Mercury Grand Marquis, like a 2002, and I think the trunk in this is actually bigger. This thing is huge. You can fit so much stuff in here, and it is a super practical classic car to live with. Now the inside of these Volvos is super cool. This was the only version that you could get with a black headliner. And Volvo, all of the two series, which is really interesting, was this kind of like hard plastic uh, headliner, which a lot of older cars you can see get that like sagging headliner where the glue lets go, but not these old Volvos. The headliner always looks this good. Even in some like really rough Volvos, the headliner still looks great. Moving down to this, this is actually a factory option uh, gauge cluster that you could get from Volvo's racing team, which I think is really interesting, even in 78. And then onto the seats, <laughs> these are corduroy. <laughs> I never thought that I would see the day where there's corduroy seats with this like orangish reddish leather st or stripe going down the center of it but these are original this is actually how it came from the factory with corduroy seats that's super 70s and i honestly i love that about this car they wanted to make this thing look chunky and flat and flush even going as far as designing this lighter look at that so this is the lighter, but because they wanted to make it look flush and integrated, they gave it this sort of funky design <laughs> so that when it's in there, you don't even notice it. Even the ashtray has that same like little lip and it's even functional because it kind of helps you pull it out. And then all the buttons are super big, chunky, easy to use in cold climates with big thick gloves. Even the radio is original. This is just an AM FM radio, no CDs no tapes nothing just the radio moving on to the the shifters so this is a four speed manual with overdrive so you could select overdrive in any gear by pulling this down and it basically just ups the r or lowers the rpms by about a thousand rpm so in any gear you want if you want to start being a little more fuel efficient you just flip that down it's just an engaging experience to drive right you've got this classically designed vehicle that's just got all the right lines and it's got all the right features going on on the outside like those pinstripes they look super cool i love them um the steering on this feels pretty tight the the, the shift pattern on it isn't bad you know it's not as crisp as like some of the vehicles i've driven but it's it's not too bad actually it doesn't have a lot of slop in it it does feel a little bit rubbery but i like it honestly i I just love sitting in here. It just feels like an interesting place to be, you know, with the seats, the way that the dash is very squared off, the way that the buttons are big and chunky, and it's it's very useful. It's just, it's nice. It's a very pleasant drive, honestly. Like, the, the owner says that he um, put in some aftermarket suspension on this, so I'm not dealing with you know what you'd have is like a factory suspension so i think this might be a little bit firmer than the factory but even at that it, it doesn't feel crashy it's not harsh you know these volvos are known for re their reliability these things will go on and on and on and last forever i had a volvo 240 a later version that had over 257,000 miles on it and it probably much more than that because the odometer stopped working and that thing ran like a champ. It was great. And that's what a lot of people buy these for is it's just a good piece of transportation. And when you get it like this, where it's the GT adding a little bit of spiciness to it, a little bit of sporting intentions, throwing in that manual transmission, making it a two door, man, you got a reliable classic that's also fun to drive. Can't beat it. So Volvo was really concerned about safety with all of their cars and that started with a lot of little things they did including like look at this this has a flush mounted handle so you can open the door but it doesn't have a door handle that's protruding out that would i don't know go into your leg if you got into an accident and then also this steering column right here was actually a breakaway steering column so if you got into an accident it would break away rather than impaling you in your chest and then the uh 
engine mounts under there were designed in a way where the engine would go underneath the car if you got into an accident rather than coming into the cabin. And the seat belts on this one are actually really interesting with them clicking into that center console there rather than having a free floating like little buckle that you click into. But as far as seat belts and Volvos go, that's who you can thank for the invention of it because in 1959, they actually invented the three-point safety harness. And instead of just patenting it and using it exclusively in Volvo cars, they gave it away so that everybody could have the safety of a three-point harness. So I really think that this is a truly underappreciated classic vehicle. These first came out in 1974 and were made all the way through 1993. What's interesting is the 700 series Volvos came out in 1982 to replace this thing. But people loved it so, so much that they just kept making this as well as the 700 series. And oddly enough, that 700 series actually ended production in 1992 whereas this was 1993, so this even outlived its replacement. They're all a rear-wheel drive sporty car. I mean, well, not all of them have sporting intentions like this awesome GT here, but if you got some of the later versions, like the ones that replaced this, it was a turbo. So it even had more power than this thing was. And they're just, they're really underappreciated and you can pick these things up for in pristine condition for less than $20,000 and a little bit rougher condition for even less than $15,000. And I think with the cool factor of this thing and the, des the timeless design of it, you're gonna be hard pressed to find something more interesting to drive around for that amount of money. But thanks so much for watching this video. And as always, if you have an interesting classic that you're looking to sell, Hit us up at tflbids.com where we promise to get your car listed and sold faster than any other automotive auction site. And for everything else, check out alltfl.com. This has been Brendan. A big thanks to Chris for bringing out his cool ride today and Cole behind the camera. Take care, guys.